Okay, I'm gonna continue straight on from the last lesson where we looked at the brush tool and we're gonna look at the type tool down here in the menu toolbar. toolbar. So to work with this, you just click on it and this is a little bit different from some of the other tools like the brush tool because you don't actually need a new layer for this. Once you select it, you can see again, like the brush tool, the cursor changes. So there's a certain type of cursor for working with the type tool. This becomes really, really useful as you actually work between all these different tools because what happens is it's telling you what's about to happen based on what the cursor is. So if once you start to recognize the, these different symbols and cursors, you'll know, oh, I've got the text tool selected, type tool. Oh, I've got the brush tool selected. And you know, if it's not what you want, you know, you've got to go and change stuff. All you need to do is click and type and you'll see text on screen. So I can type whatever I want and you can see that's going across the screen. Now, this is a little bit cumbersome to work with, but we're gonna work through some of that now. So you'll notice first that this has picked up on the foreground color that we had set from the previous lesson where you know we set this red for the brush. To change the color of your text, you obviously need that foreground color set. You can change it there, but the other thing you'll notice is the menu bar once again has changed, and now we've got a whole bunch of options to do with type, including at the end there, the color of the text. So I could come in, click here, we're back in our color picker. I want white, click that, and now we've got white text. So if I continue typing, which is just at the end, now it's in white, but the start of the text is still in that red. So how do I deal with that? Well, easiest way to do that is just select all the text, which you could do with your mouse and click and drag, just like if you were in Word or something else, or you can just hit Control A or Command A on a Mac. That'll select all the text you've currently typed. Now I can go back to that color picker. See how it's got a question mark? What that means is Photoshop can't tell what color it is because it's actually two. Doesn't matter, we're still gonna click on it and we'll just set everything to white and that's gonna get rid of all that red text and now everything's white. So that's kind of the first thing, working with the color of the type you are adding to your document. Second thing is font size. So again, you've got controls up here to change the font, the type of the font, bold, italic, normal, and then the size of the font. So we'll work with these three initially. So again, I could do control A, select all that text, and then come up here to font size, click this drop down, and you can see there's a whole range of font sizes. So if I click one of those, you can see it goes much smaller. Now we've got a problem here because the maximum size in this drop down is 72. This is kind of a quirk with Photoshop, um, but suffice to say, what this means is you've got to know to click in this drop down and you can actually just type over the top of this value. So if this is 72, I'm pretty much gonna to wanna to double this. So I'm gonna type in 200, hit return, and that changes it to a 200 pixel font size. So now this is a lot bigger, looks a lot better. You can see that's all bold. So again, I can do control A, come in here, and then I've got lots of different variants of the type of font. This is always gonna depend on what font you're working with. So Helvetica here has got all these sort of different sizes and weights from regular to light, bold, etc. Other fonts won't have all those. Some may only have a regular and that's very much down to the font. Installing fonts and which types of fonts you can get is kind of a whole different topic. Suffice to say, there's plenty you can work with out of the gate and Photoshop ships with a whole bunch. You can get a whole bunch through Adobe's Creative Cloud uh, feature and pull lots of different fonts into your system that you can change your text to. So we've dealt with font color, we've dealt with font size, we've dealt with picking different fonts and how those fonts look. So again, I could come in here, select one of these words, not that they're really words, change that to bold. And so it's starting to look and feel a little bit like a word processor. Effectively, what we've done is we've just added a box onto the document where we can add type. Stuff like carriage returns work, 
So I can hit that and add text further down. Uh, all looks good. Once I'm done, what I tend to do is go back to this tool up the top. So the move tool is kind of my default V. What you're gonna to wanna to do is click that, not press V because of course, because you're using the type tool, none of the keyboard shortcuts for getting to the, any of the other tools are gonna to work. So you gotta click the tool to get out of that and then your type is kind of set. But just like the effect layers we touched on in the non-destructive editing video earlier, what's now happened is all that text has been added as a text layer in our layers panel over here. So you can see that's got its own icon, T, and then it's just giving you a little preview of the type of text that's in that. Now, if we wanna edit that again, you can come over to this T, double click it, and it will return you to the type tool and select all the text. So now I can come in here, make any change that I want. So that's pretty much all there is to it. There's another panel you can work with that gives you a lot more control over how fonts look, uh, which you can get to up here. So you have two, character and paragraph. So if I click that, you can see I have those in these sort of hidden panels that are in this strip here. I like working with this for changing stuff like the line spacing. So this option here, you can change how spaced out each of the lines are. And you can see again, those options up to 72 aren't enough. So again, I can come in here, 200 hit return, and that's gonna space things out. There's also the character spacing below that. That's this VA. I come in here. I can increase the spacing between the letters or decrease going the negative way. And then there's lots of other different options in here that can be played with to get really fine grained control over typography. One little convention I wanna to touch on here um, that applies to these text boxes that have drop downs of numerical values. So whenever you see something that's got a numerical value, as well as being able to select from the drop down or type in a value, what you can actually do is if you get your cursor to the left where the icon is next to whichever numerical value you're dealing with, if you click on it and drag, you can actually slide back and forth and get much sort of faster control over changing the values and dialing them into something you know that's more suitable to what you want. So with the character spacing there, I can quickly dial that in. With the line spacing, I can quickly push that up and then I'm done in that panel. I could go back up the top here to the font size, click that icon. So I'm dragging this kind of left and right, not up and down. So as I drag it up and down, sorry, as I'm dragging it to the right, that's increasing the font size. So that's a nice little hidden feature that a lot of folks don't know about um, that'll just help you out with working with any numerical value in one of those um, text boxes like that, whether it's to do with type or any other feature in Photoshop. So that's it for this lesson. That's a very quick intro to type. There are lots of other advanced options you can do with type, but this will pretty much cover you for 90% of what you wanna do. Head to toyshooter.com for more tutorials, resources, and help with Photoshop compositing. You can also subscribe to my free newsletter by visiting shoot.toys in your browser or clicking on the link on screen. You can also follow my work on Instagram at instagram.com slash shoot.toys. Subscribe to the channel to watch a special subscriber-only video, which you'll find on my channel page after subscribing. Lastly, you'll find links to all the places I've just mentioned in the description for this video below.